I like big axes, and I cannot lie. You other thanes can't deny that when a shield maid walks in with a nice thick waist and a Dane axe in your face, you get sprung. Just like I got sprung when I received this Viking broad axe from Grimfrost out of Sweden. But is this a functional weapon or just a cool looking historical reenactment prop that happens to have a sharp edge? Stick around, we'll find out. Hey everybody and welcome to the Modern Scald, where we love bows, blades, and ancient lore. Something we love a lot is big Viking axes, like this Grimfrost broad axe from Grimfrost in Sweden. Now today, unfortunately, has been a day of disappointments for multiple reasons. You'll see why later. But one of which is I did a lot of filming outside with this axe. It was a beautiful day in Ohio, 28 degrees Fahrenheit, light snow, no rain, no mud, and it was actually daylight. But unfortunately, I filmed under a power line and my cheap microphone was picking up electrical interference from everywhere. I think we were getting interference from the Fukushima reactor. It was insane. So unfortunately, most of this review is going to be inside, but that's fine, and you understand why later. So, this axe is the Grimfrost's Viking Broad Axe. It is five feet, five inches long, which tells you how tall I am not. It weighs around five pounds. It's got a head that is cast in EN45 carbon steel. It's got a brass, uh, cylinder or canister or whatever wrapped around the ash haft and the ash haft uh, which is five feet long is very nicely done it's a plain ash haft you can finish it yourself if you'd like but the grain lines are great uh, the, the haft here is really nice it's also uh, wedged the head is held on with a wedge the head is supposed to be held on with a wedge <laughs> So that's very nice as well. Now, if you're familiar with Grimfrost, and I'll link their uh, website in the description below, then you might have seen the Ginya, which is a more expensive hand-forged broad axe that looks a lot like this one. This is not the Ginya. Uh, this is a more affordable option that they added to their line of weapons probably within the last couple months. Uh, and the reason it's more affordable at 290 US dollars is the fact that the head of the axe is cast. Uh, this takes a lot of the labor, a lot of the work, out of the process and making this blade. And it is cast of EN45 carbon steel, one solid piece, right? So why did I buy this axe? Well, if you've watched my channel, you know that I have another Dane axe or a great axe or a broad axe uh, from Arms and Armor. I love this axe. Um, this is a relatively historically accurate axe, but the difference, uh, as you can see here, is that this blade is thin all the way to the edge. This is one piece of carbon steel all the way to the edge. Now, that is historically accurate. There were blades like that that have been found from the Viking era, and they're great cutters, right? But there are also blades that have been found from the Viking era, which have an iron head with a carbon steel cutting edge forge welded onto the blade. It gives it this really interesting kind of uh, diamond-like cross section, and it just looks more substantial, and really it looks more beastly. When you think of a barbarian axe, you know, you think about this nice shiny blade here and the darker axe head and it just looks really awesome. This is based, inspired by, a historical find in Norway. Uh, so that's really great. But uh, obviously this one uh, just looks the part, okay? It wasn't made um, following the traditional methods of forge welding a carbon steel edge onto an iron head. Now you can buy axes like that. Uh, the Ginya, I believe, is a, a 
an authentic uh, replica uh, made using traditional or fairly traditional methods. Um, Thor's Forge, if you follow Scala Gladiatoria, Matt Easton's channel, uh, he's done a lot of videos on Thor's Forge. Uh, Tord at Thor's Forge makes um, broad axes using that method. But the thing is, they're very expensive, as they should be, because it's a labor-intensive job. Um, I've seen them range anywhere from $850 over, uh, up to over $1,000, $1,200. So not everybody has that much money just laying around uh, to buy an axe. And frankly, if I did have that much money laying around to buy an axe, I would probably buy a really nice, well-made sword, maybe an Albion or something like that. But those axes sure do look cool, don't they? And I spent a lot of time drooling over that type of a broad axe. So when Grimfrost stuck this up on their website a couple months ago, and it looked the part, even though I knew it wasn't historically accurate, right? In terms of production and materials, I still wanted it. Now, I was hesitant at first. The reason I was hesitant is because Grimfrost has a huge online presence. Um, they're kind of like the Amazon Prime of Viking wares, okay? And I'm usually hesitant anytime something has that big of an online presence. In fact, if you say Viking in front of a smart device, chances are you're going to get ads from Grimfrost. Well, then Grimfrost partnered up with Dr. Jackson Crawford, uh, an Old Norse specialist who has a YouTube channel. Uh, and I highly recommend his YouTube channel if you're interested in Viking era history and medieval Norse culture and language. And that gave me a little bit of, ho a little bit of hope that maybe the authenticity that Grimfrost claims is true. I also think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be mistaken, that Thor's Forge actually made a few weapons for them at one point in time. But uh, if you look at their weapon lineup, it's pretty clear that a lot of the weapons are made for people who might be historical reenactors and they just want a cool looking, somewhat functional prop. When I say somewhat functional, I mean it'll cut paper, right? You can sharpen it, you can maybe drop it, and it won't break. But usually Grimfrost uh, specifies somewhere in their notes on their weapons that, you know, this isn't made for sparring, things like that. Well, when they uploaded this to their website, they actually included a video of a guy chopping down a small pine tree, okay? And of course, it comes made with EN45 carbon steel, which is a steel I'm not super familiar with, but I understand it's pretty popular in Europe. And it's supposed to have an HRC of between 55 and 58. That's pretty good. So that, coupled with this video, told me that they're not shying away from someone actually using this for test cutting of some sort. So I decided to go ahead and buy it and see if maybe it could be uh, used as a functional weapon or if it was just going to be a historical reenactment prop that can do a little bit of cutting, very light cutting. So I'm going to tell you some things that I don't like about this axe. I'll tell you some things that I do like about this axe. I'll show you a little bit of footage of me doing some cutting with this axe, and then, uh, then we'll wrap things up with my conclusion. All right, so let's talk about what I don't like and what I do like about this axe. Things that I don't like. Well, the casting job that they did really isn't too bad. There's not a lot of casting lines, but anytime you buy cast steel, there's likely to be imperfections, and this is certainly no exception. Uh, this side of the axe looks pretty good. This side, however, maybe you can see it. It looks like there's a steel worm <laughs> inching its way down the blade, so that's kind of weird. You also have what almost look like chips uh, here on the, the uh, pole. Um, those aren't chips, it's just imperfections from the casting. That's not a big deal. Um, but still, it's not, not something I'm happy about. Uh, another big thing, probably the biggest thing that I was not happy about, is that when this came, 
I questioned how sturdy um, the wedge here would be with this brass cylinder wrapped around the haft. You know, I wasn't sure how well it would actually hold the axe head on. And there was a little bit of a wiggle uh, before I even did any testing. Well, sure enough, uh, after some fairly light testing, uh, this axe head started to come off. I fixed it, I pounded it back down on. But uh, that's a big deal, you know. If you were to be using this, let's say that we were in, a, in battle, right? If this was an actual Viking era axe, if you took two or three swings and the head came off, you'd have a quarter staff, right? So that is a big deal. Um, probably a deal breaker if I would have known that that would happen, okay? Uh, $290. That's not a lot, but you should be able to expect the actual axe head to stay on. If you're, if you're advertising this as being a functional uh, tool or a functional weapon, and unfortunately that did not happen. Last thing that I don't like, it comes sharp and it is sharp. And I tell you, if we were fighting against a shield wall made from paper, this axe would cut through it like butter. It would destroy it. But great axes and broad axes and Dane axes were not meant to cut paper, right? They were meant to cut bone. Uh, they were likely to hit chain mail. They were likely to hit wooden shields. And if you sharpen it like Grimfrost sharpened it with a big secondary bevel like you see here, that weakens this edge. It actually came with a folded edge already before I even tested it. Um, I suppose it's not really fair to harp on that because you didn't really get to see it before I tested it, but it was there and you can hear it, right? So if you're going to sharpen a $290 axe, it would probably be best if you use a more historically accurate method, maybe a belt grinder or something so that you can have a nice apple seed uh, edge like my $400 arms and armor axe. Granted, it is a $400 axe. This is a $290 axe, but still. So uh, the edge is definitely not the best edge for this type of an axe. That's really about it in terms of things that I don't like. Let's talk about what I do like. First of all, I like the way it looks. Uh, this is just a huge, <laughs> imposing, historically accurate looking uh, Viking era great axe. It looks stunning, uh, especially from a distance, you know. Um, I would be very proud to walk around with this thing uh, at a historical reenactment event or a Renaissance fair. You would, you would be the most famous guy there walking around with this axe, right? Um, I really like this haft. It's a very substantial haft. In fact, it is more substantial than my Arms and Armor Dane Axe, as you can see here. Uh, I would trust that this would not break more than I would trust that this would not break. In fact, that might be a lesson for Arms and Armor to take from Grimfrost. Uh, Thor's Forge is the same way. Very nice, not too big, not too heavy, but substantial, well-shaped for indexing uh, halves here. So that's really great. Another thing that I love is the fact that this axe comes with a uh, supposedly hand-stitched uh, leather sheath, okay? The reason that I love that is that it's very difficult to find axes that come with a leather sheath, especially one that looks this good. And if you were to take this to a Renaissance festival or some historical reenactment event, at least in Ohio, uh, they generally require you to keep your weapon sheathed at all times and if it can be tied shut, I believe they require that as well. So that's definitely another benefit. And last of all, I just really liked Grimfrost's customer service. Uh, they got the ax to me from Sweden in a timely manner. I think it took about a week and a half, maybe two weeks. Um, they notify you every step of the way and they have really good customer service as well as a, a great website. Um, so that is definitely something that I like about this ax as well. So now that you know the good and the bad, uh, let's take a look at the minimal testing that I did. 
I didn't go crazy with this axe because I knew that the head was a little bit loose to start with. So I just did a couple uh, water jugs, didn't do a lot because it was a little chilly outside. Um, and then I lightly uh, hit some ash, an ash uh, log. Didn't go crazy with it, I hit it lightly and it didn't take long uh, for things to go um, a poor direction. Let's take a look. So as you can see, I did a little bit of cutting with some water jugs, but it was very chilly outside. I got my camera wet, I was getting myself wet. It's really not good to cut water jugs when it's 28 degrees outside. Uh, so I did decide to throw up a little bit uh, of an ash log, which I chopped into a few times. I didn't chop super hard. I just wanted to really let it fall with a little bit of extra force to see how it held up. And it didn't take long at all for the head to start walking its way up the haft. And I decided to quit because it's just kind of dangerous to have to worry about a big ax head flying through the air. Uh, so as you can see, it was certainly working its way up that brass cylinder on the haft, which is something that I was afraid it would do. So, am I happy with my purchase? Would I buy this axe again and who would I recommend it to? Yeah, I actually am happy with this purchase. Would I buy it again? Probably not. Uh, and the reason I probably wouldn't is just because of the fact that, you know, I don't want to have to worry about that axe head coming up off the haft. I'm not gonna use this a lot, but if I did want to use it or use it in a video with more testing, I don't wanna to have to worry about that. Now I did uh, pound the head down and it feels a little bit more sturdy now, but it's still on the back of my mind, right? Um, so that's a pretty big flaw that, uh, that I don't appreciate and maybe something that Grim Frost could look into if they're going to at least insinuate that you can cut down a pine tree. Uh, with this axe because I wouldn't recommend that unless you make absolutely sure that the axe head is very, very secure. And even then, it might continue to walk up uh, the haft. It's hard to say. I would recommend this axe for people who are into historical reenactment that do not require a 100% historically accurate reproduction right down to the materials. It looks really cool. It looks historically accurate. You've got the leather sheath. Um, you know, if you're just a person who likes to dress up like a, a Viking or a Saxon Huskarl or something for Renaissance fairs, this would be awesome uh, to take with you. Is that worth $290 to you? It might be to some people. Um, I suppose it would be to me as well, just for the cool factor. But again, that ax head coming off you're definitely going to want to consider that if you use this for test cutting and stick to soft targets like water bottles to tommy mats maybe if you want to do some softer woods like pine but just be very very careful and again i do think that's something that grim frost if you're watching uh, you should uh, you should consider uh, when these are being made so i hope that helps you make up your mind if you were considering this axe uh, and certainly check it out if you were not aware of it already. It, it really does look cool and I'm, I'm really excited to just have this displayed in my house. Um, but I really appreciate you folks watching and we'll see you next time.